Hey, all my cancer friends. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Terry Hunter. I'm an intuitive astrologer, and I'm here today with your July 2024 monthly horoscope. These horoscopes are based on whole sign Western astrology. So when we talk about cancer, we're talking about cancer rising as dictating the landscape of the chart, being the first house. This is also applicable to cancer sun, cancer moon, and if you have three or more personal planets in the sign of cancer, this is applicable to you as well. When I talk about a day and a time, I'm basing it on the Pacific time zone. So please adjust for your location. Well, the month starts off with an opposition between Mercury that rules our everyday thoughts, the way we speak, the people we interact with, our neighborhoods, our communities, our roadways, uh, is in an opposition to Pluto over here, retrograde. Uh, Pluto is, you know, many things. Pluto rules transformation and and it rules um, other people's money and it rules death and taxes and sex. But all of those situations have control over us on a psychological level, which is what I think is Pluto's greatest and biggest power, is that Pluto is able to vet out our deepest fears and our deepest insecurities. And this push-pull as the month starts seems very um, powerful to me, because when I first look at today's transits, I see so many uh, aspects and planets at a one degree. We see the 28 reduces down to a 10 and a 10 reduces down to a one. So this is, feels like my monkey mind. The things that don't nurture me, don't make me feel like I'm being filled up. This is almost feels as if I've got too much going on. I've got to worry about too many other people. Aquarius is your eighth house uh, of transformation. So this opposition really presents a an, a moment to stop and, and take an awareness of, uh, is my life running me or am I running my life? We see this one in the, uh, again with Pluto. We also see it in other places in the chart. We see the nodal structure at an 11. We see Neptune at a 29, which reduces down to an 11. We see uh, Saturn retrograde at 19 degrees, which reduces down to a 10. The sun is at 10 degrees. All of these ones are indicating thought. Uh, 11 is the master number of thought. And how we master thought is not by trying to wrestle it into a positive place. We master it by understanding that the brain is an apparatus and it ebbs and it flows. And as we become aware of the ebb and the flow and we discern what, what do I want? Am I thinking about the things I want? Or do I think about the things that are holding me back or the things that are in my way? This is what the, the main theme of this month is. Um, Saturn will be at uh, 19 degrees uh, for a total of six weeks between moving forward, stationing to retrograde, and then retrograding. That's quite a long time. And the 19, while it reduces down to a 10, is also the degree of Libra. Libra, balance, harmony, a sense of diplomacy with myself and others. And um, I think this is a really powerful way to start the month. And there could potentially be literally someone outside of yourself that creates some sort of disruption uh, that puts all of this into your awareness. And when we go to the next day, we see that Neptune has gone retrograde. Neptune is going to retrograde in Pisces. And then in March of 2025, it's going to move back or move into Aries. And that's going to feel significantly different. Uh, Neptune is the ruler of Pisces. And in many ways, this retrograde is a revisit of my spiritual tools. Am I using my intuition, my inner voice? Am I trusting that knowing that when it's time to take self-care? I think that's really powerful. Um, and, and I want to offer it this way because Saturn's whole stint in Pisces, and for you, Cancer, that's your ninth house of beliefs, has been asking um, all of us to root in our spiritual beliefs and to use them on a daily basis as if the same way we would, you know, use our cars to get where we need to go. Saturn wants us to use our spiritual tools to build a strong house that is 
based on our create creativity and the life we imagine it to be. But part of that is also being aware of what we are creating. And if there's something to disrupting that, that we rather than pretend it's not there, we look at it and we determine whether it's really, you know, what to do about it. And that oftentimes is shifting the way we're thinking. We see on the day that Neptune goes retrograde, that Saturn is making an aspect of trying to Venus in your first house. And Venus enjoys being in, in Cancer. It's a very nice place for her. So we are having this, this sort of opportunity to look at the structures we're building, the things that we want, even some of the histories that we have um, felt on a soul's level, and to feel a sense of you know, everything's working out in its own timing and I'm, I'm preparing and every day that I prepare to be more ready to receive the things I want, the more they come to me. And I think this is also um, echoed by Saturn's sextile to Mars. Mars here in, in Taurus is a little bit challenged because Taurus is not its favorite place. Mars is in detriment in Taurus. So, but here it's slowing down long enough to really think about what I want. The 11th house rules our hopes and our dreams and they mature over time. And Taurus is a, is a history um, sign. It's a, a house that, or Taurus is a sign that rules my personal history, the history that I experienced growing up that shaped my perception of myself, my ability to use my skills, my ability to use my voice, my ability to build my life. And Saturn is supporting uh, both your confidence and your action. And here, you know, when Mars is considered in detriment, it's because Mars doesn't get to fly through the landscape of, of Taurus. Think of Taurus as representing sort of a mountainous but dense forest and Mars has to go through it and learn how to listen to the sounds of the forest and, um, and slow down so that it can actually open up. That's the way I'm putting it, which is also echoing all the ones that are still taking place in the chart that are that spirits divine gift. How are you thinking? What are you thinking? Are you focused on worry or are you focused on possibilities and if you do think about worry, well, that's just fine. But are you focusing in on the worry? Because that's where the concentrated energy goes. And that's how you're kicking in the laws of attraction that could create issues. Okay. Now we see that Mercury has uh, moved into Leo. And this is fun. This is all fun all the time. You know, it, Leo is a house where there's entertainment and laughter and joy and leo is your um second house and i want to offer this because the the oppositions that pluto represents as not only mercury but venus and the sun will all experience this opposition this month it's it gives you a chance to really decide if any of the things that you've been experiencing up until now need to move into the future with you. Thoughts, people, things, childhood dynamics, teammates, you know, at some point we get tired of the rat race. And I think that this might kind of be heralding in cancer, being a little sick of the rat race and wanting to really enjoy life more. Now we still see these ones in the 11 of the uh, sun is making a square. The 11th degree is making a square to the nodes. Um, and this could potentially um, feel as if there are old habits that you're expected to continue of putting other people ahead of yourself or putting other dynamics that are more important than you are. And the tension is the awareness of that and their habits and people that in situations you care about. And yet the sun is encouraging you also through a tense aspect to individualize yourself, to allow yourself the privilege of, of your own personal career advancements or your how you would like the public to see or how you would like to assert yourself in a way that creates... Um, a, a sense of reputation, I guess, is the way I want to put that. This is um, a tense aspect, and yet it's a it's a brief one. And I think that this, you know, we. I'm sorry, I'm stuttering. 
The sun is how we shine our light, our vitality, our sense of self. And this may be feeling like a push-pull between your obligations to others and creating cooperation with how they perceive it and how things that you want for yourself. Libra is your fourth house of home. Aries is your 10th house of career and ambition. And this could be uh, exasperated by the thoughts and the actions of those around you, meaning Mercury represents children. It can represent, again, the people in your community, the people you interact with, the people at the market, the people at the school, the people on the roadways. So just be mindful because I think that people could be feeling inadvertently cranky around you. So the more conscious we are of our thoughts, that's all these ones and all these, these numbers that reduce down to the one. That's how it supports us. Okay, let's go to the fifth where we're seeing a new moon in your sign, Cancer. This is a very significant moon because it's in between two Capricorn full moons. This is on the fifth at 3.57 p.m. at the 14th degree of Cancer. And I really, as I was, you know, musing about this, I thought, okay, so 14 degrees is that Taurus Venusian degree. We see Venus isn't far off from this, this new moon. And I feel like the Capricorn full moon at the end of June started to illuminate some things. Capricorn is your seventh house. And this could be very much about how do I create a sense of peace and harmony for myself so that that fosters health in my relationships with others, especially my intimate partnerships, my marriage partnerships, my work partnerships, you know, the people. When we have a partner in business and we do a contract and we agree, we are in the seventh house. So your Capricorn seventh house is going to get lit up again by Pluto's re-entry to it. And this new moon is an op opportunity to really plant the seeds for a, a healing, a balancing, a self-nurturing, a maternal. That one of the challenges about the uh, cancer energy is it's a little bit invisible. When we pick, when we think about the maternal, which it represents, mom's the last one to eat. You know, she's the one that sits down at the cold table or at a table with a cold meal. So you know, or serving other people, serving the family, taking care of them, making sure everybody's tucked in and tight and safe and sound. And nobody's always worried about mom. So it can be, it, there can be a sense of a little bit of loneliness in that. So I think that might also be the Mercury's opposition to Pluto and exasperation of that. I'm wanting to kind of nurture the self more. Now, there are great aspects to this new moon, to Saturn, giving us an opportunity to really root in something as we reflect on how do I create peace? Again, Saturn's been sitting at this 19th degree, Libra degree, for six weeks before it moves into the 18th degree. That's a significant period of time. Now, um, let's go on to Venus's entry on the 11th. We'll go back to 12 o'clock. She will enter Leo and she will have her opposition. The opposition will last a couple of days, but here at the zero degree, it's very potent because this is where Venus really gets to sort of examine her potential. You know, what makes her feel uh, alive? What makes her feel like the sun is shining on her? You know, some of you may have career aspirations that put a spotlight on you, and this is a real time to, to reflect on, you know, what Mercury revealed and also how you want things to be, because this Pluto dynamic is really wanting to serve you, to liberate you, to give you a sense of your own individual genius out there expressed in the world. And Pluto is making a trine now to Mars and to Uranus over here in Taurus. And Taurus is your house of hopes and dreams. And this could be, this could be quite a, um, a volatile energy. We're going to see this conjunct on the 15th, but it's growing in conjunction. But at the same time, I believe that those that have been standing in awareness, you know, recognizing the nodes now move to 10 degrees. We're still seeing the one theme here. The sun is at the 19th degree. There's the one theme there. Jupiter's at 10 degrees. There's the one theme there. 
and we just, you know, these continue. It's just, it, it's blowing my mind, honestly, when I look at it. Um, but I also want to offer that this, um, this conjunction is also Mars getting liberated from an old story. Mars spent seven months in your 12th house last, uh, the 20, 2022 to 2023 through the retrogrades. And this was a significant long period of time to travel through the house of the mind, the monkey mind, and the little bits of information that don't really tell a full story. So now Mars has been all the way around the Zodiac, almost two years has gone by at least, and, and Mars is ready to go back into your 12th house with a new attitude and displaying that. And we're gonna see that echoed here. Now. I think that people that are living, you know, sort of, you know, day to day, not really digging too deep into how they roll, this could be a little sketchy. This could get a little spiky out there in the world. So be mindful of that. And if there are people that anger you or piss you off, do your best not to engage in in the activity, honestly, that you might be the higher road is just not to pick up the phone or not to make that call or not to shoot that text until you're, you're centered. Again, Pluto's opposing you. Something could fire up. Um, I also wanted to mention in the background throughout this whole thing, because we've been talking about having, you know, our mind and what we're thinking, Pluto is making a sextile to Neptune. This sextile is going to go on for the next decade plus. It is um, giving us, as Pluto will retrograde back into your seventh house, and then it will reside in your eighth house of Aquarius for until 20, I think, 44. Neptune is going to retrograde, and then in March of 2025, move into Aries. And they'll continue to travel in this sextile, really giving us an opportunity to experience our individuality and our spirituality lived in the earth plane. That's what that's what Saturn's been doing while it's been traveling through this Pisces energy. We also see that Pluto is making a, a nice trine to Uranus and Uranus in turn is making a sextile to Neptune. That dynamic will continue on for the next four or five years. These are the slow moving planets that will are literally like the soundtrack. You know, you like you go into an office building and you hear the music over the, the speaker, but you don't really hear it. You don't really pay attention to it. This is playing out in the background, which is accentuating the whole idea that right now thoughts are things. And we're getting an awareness of that. And as we harness our thoughts and the harnessing is this. We're not trying to wrestle that again, that positivity. We're just aware up. Oh, does this thought serve me? Do I do, is this really working for me right now? Or is there another possibility? And if I can't think of one, can I just tell myself, well, the universe is working for me. Everything's working out for me. Verbiage is going to become very important. Okay. Now let's go to the 20th where we will see Mars enter Gemini. And it will make an exact trine to Pluto. Oh, let me go a little for a little later in the day. There we go. I think this is super powerful. Um, the We still see the sextile from Uranus to Neptune and then Neptune to Pluto. And now Mars has joined this, this energy. In Gemini, things happen quickly. Mars is very quick. Gemini is very quick. And Jupiter's in there, and it's going to start to expand things. This is your 12th house, giving you an opportunity to reconcile some old imprint, some old story that it comes from your soul, not just your, your personal life journey in this, in this incarnation. So I think this is really brave. Plus, this is where Mars really gets to show the hero, you know, really gets to implement. Now, again, there's always going to be unconscious people that have not been seeking balance in their lives. But as we who are drawn to this material are, this is where the hero comes out, the pioneer, the adventurer, the person who knows that they're stretching themselves. And here Mars is stretching his mind, being aware of how he communicates and what he's teaching others about his energy as he goes through this sign. We also see 
sun is at 28 degrees at this time, which I think is kind of funny when we talk about the ones uh, yet again, and the sun will be in an exact opposition in, in a day or so to Pluto. So we're feeling that already. Um, okay, let's go on to the 21st where we're going to have our second Capricorn um, full moon before the the uh, the moon cycles go back to normal. So we've been experiencing a full moon that preceded the new moon each month since last October, September, October. And now we're going to, through this cycle, go back to the new moon at the beginning of the month and the full moon at the second half. But before we do, at 3.17 a.m. Pacific time on the 21st, this Capricorn full moon is at 29 degrees. I just, you know, can I just laugh about these ones once again? And this master number now, when you see a 29, it's reducing down to an 11. So something is coming to an illumination. And this illumination has a lot to do with Pluto's conversations with Mercury and Venus. And uh, the sun will be tomorrow, but we also see Venus is at 11 degrees. So it's going to be about your confidence, about your self-worth, about where your priorities are. And if being selfless and giving to others is really just a recipe for resentment and anger, or uh, is being a little bit of, about yourself actually giving more to others than it's taking away. I think this is really, really powerful. The The Capricorn energy you know, historically has been labeled repressive and been labeled depressive and labeled limiting and, you know, top down structure, government authority. But right now, the, the authorities are being revisited because we're, we have so much opportunity to interact with people that we never have before. Our minds are expanding. And I think that's one of the greatest benefits of Jupiter being in your 12th house right now is really an integration of these bigger concepts in our everyday life, which is further being supported by the nodes here, okay, of individualizing, of allowing yourself that knowing that when you self-care, and this could be something as mundane as going in the other room and playing the crossword puzzle. Um, my brother-in-law years ago, I used to work with him and he would get to work at like seven o'clock in the morning, but work didn't really start until about nine, eight thirty or nine. And he would just sit in his office and read the newspaper and have his coffee and his muffin or whatever it was, because he just needed some peace, you know, his own little time and space from the hecticness of his everyday life. This is what is being offered to you, my cancers. An illumination as to how you are participating in your own ease, in your own peace of mind, and how much you actually do deserve that. And by the way, happy birthday. I should have said that earlier. I uh, I don't want to go into a long story, but um, this is the second recording of this video that I'm making. Um, the first one got inadvertently de deleted. So I'm excited about this. Um, let's click on the moon real quick. Just want to emphasize that there's a positive and supportive aspect for liberating myself when I'm willing to take brave action to examine how I think. How do I speak? Who do I interact with? And am I giving of myself in a way that that depletes me? Because if I'm depleted, I'm I'm really not being of service. And all of this is supported again by the moon's conjunction to Pluto and Pluto offering the zero degree of a new beginning and the new beginning of how I emotionally process myself, how I, how I, what are the structures of my own emotional body? We, you know, I'm, I'm just got this whole hit of stress and, you know, I can't, I can't let go. I'll be too stressed out. And I'm thinking to myself, it's not about letting go. It's about integrating. It's integrating. And this is the opportunity that Neptune is giving you to revisit your be, do, have. What is your being energy when you take action? What is your attitude? What is your disposition? What is your emotional joy level? Because when all of those are aligned to a vibration of, of a get to, of an excitement, then your manifestations are so much more powerful than when they're in an obligation or a 
a duty energy. Okay, so that's it for this full moon. Let's go back to 12 p.m. And uh, we'll go to the next day. The sun will have moved into Leo and we'll see a lot of fun potential here. We have a little bit of a tenseness between Mercury and uh, Uranus and Mars. But again, I think that has a lot to do with what you're, how you're processing things and how you're, how you're feeling obliged. I mean, sometimes we can turn fun into a project, you know, we're all going to go to the beach, but it takes four hours to get there. By the time everyone's packed up, we get all the lunches, la, 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 because this is a time when this uh, Mars and Uranus square to Mercury is working something up, right? It's it's kicking up the dust, but it, the quincux to Neptune is really where it, the beauty lies because there's an opportunity to stop and be like, whoa, wait a minute. Before I do anything, let me just take a minute, go into the bathroom, breathe for a second, whatever it is, applying your spiritual tools, but you can't see that that's important to do. You can't see that because of this over here this Uranus and, and Mars, I got to go now, move, move, move. But when you, when you slow down, there's an opportunity through Chiron's trine to Mercury to feel a sense of reconciliation, even a sense of reward through the awareness. It doesn't even mean that you don't fall back into the habit, but you, you just have the awareness and that's all that's important in this moment. Now on the 26th, Mercury is going to move into its rulership. And I think that's uh, a little bit of a slippery slope only because there's a blind side now to um, the quincunx to Pluto. Again, this is where you may inadvertently uh, start defaulting to old habits of thinking, of processing, of, of daily things that we need to do to get it all done. We still see the opposition between the sun and Pluto, but now we have this awareness of the trine with Mars and Uranus, and then the sextile to Neptune. So if we know the stars and we connect with them, this might not feel as annoying as it could, because this feels annoying to me. This feels like a deep dive into my psych psychology is lost on my everyday activities that I must take care of because this is practical and this is logical and this is realistic, and this is what needs to get done. And then I use the word need, that heavy brick up carrying uphill. Over here is opportunity to innovate, to take brave new action, and then to see how spirit supports that brave new action by making sure everything that I had to do over here gets done. <laughs> all right, let's just jump to the end of the month. See how it all rounds out. Whoops. And we see that the month ends with Mars starting a conjunction with Jupiter in your 12th house. You know, this again to me is a bit of a polarizing energy because those that are standing unconscious, we could see some real anger over beliefs in the neighborhood. You know, we're in an election year in the United States. We might be seeing more people taking sides and being more vocal about that. We have a square and a half to Pluto which is, uh, you know, not an easy energy. We still, we're going to continue to see for the longest time here in the background, this supporting energy for liberation as we dig into the deep dive of our emotions and who has power and control of us. And again, supported by our spiritual tools and practicing them on a regular basis. I can't emphasize that enough during these times. We also see that... Um, Venus is making a nice aspect to Chiron. And I say that because this could be a, a moment when Venus is starting to understand that confidence ebbs and flows. Everything has sort of a duality to it. And through that duality, I can um, transform any wound into a gift. And we do have a little bit of a square here with Uranus. And that might be just some unexpected memories that, that I, I shouldn't say memories. I don't know. There could be people from your history. There could be, um, you know, Uranus is the internet. It's comments on the internet. It's 
um, Taurus is your 11th house, you could find that somewhere you've, you know, if, I want to offer it this way. If you make comments on people's content, just look, look twice before you hit send because the end of the month might present just a wee bit of a challenge where you say something innocently and it's misinterpreted. That's what I want to say. Uranus being the internet, then this sort of half square from Mercury to the South node, it almost feels a little funky, but at the same time, there is this favorable aspect here to, um, to Chiron. And sometimes when we screw up, we, or maybe we, maybe you don't, maybe it's just a misinterpretation, but whatever it could potentially be, it could serve a bigger picture. That's what I'm, how it could build your confidence versus tearing it down. That's the way I wanted to put it. Well, it's an action packed time on the planet right now. And the stars are reflecting that. I think the biggest theme of this month is the amount of planets that are hanging out in somewhere in a, a one, an 11, a 10. They're all indicating that our thoughts are things and they're manifesting very quickly. So be mindful of what you're focused on because that's going to support you in these times when everybody will be experiencing outside structures that they're used to being reframed uh, and um, reworked. All right, my cancers, thank you so much for joining me today. Please like, please subscribe, please share, and I'll be back in August with your monthly. See you soon.